Welcome to the Waterboy and Equipment Manager Podcast. My name is Safe Pisaria. I'm Case Charania. I'm Nabil Hassanelli. And the Lakers just won the motherfucking Larry O'Brien trophy <laughs> in that sweet ass Louis V custom case. The, Lake, the Lakers are your Hunger Games 2020 pandemic champions of the of the world, of the bubble, however you want to say it. It is championship number 17. It is uh, LeBron is your finals MVP. Lakers win in six. I, I think, I think, I, I mean, it's, it's fucking great. It's awesome. You know, it's that logo behind you is now outdated, bro. It is. It is outdated by me. Yeah. You're, you're missing a little two zero right here. Yeah. A little 20. They'll put it probably some somewhere. I don't know, man. I don't know how they fit these things, but I am wearing my Kobe Bryant Jersey because that is the man, the myth, the legend that that built that house for us and has continued to push it forward and like all the lakers said and many many times tonight this one is for kobe this is for Gigi, this is for the other seven people that were on that helicopter this this year not just for laker fans for all people across planet earth has been one of much much difficulty for many different reasons obviously there's pandemic there's politics there's the loss of loved ones there's a loss of kobe bryant for as a loved one for a lot of people this doesn't fix that this this doesn't you know do anything in that realm but as a laker fan it feels really 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 good and so for the next few minutes we're going to talk about laker basketball and we're going to talk about what this means for the lakers what this means for lebron and anthony davis what this means for the city of la um and then and then we'll and then we'll move on and, and we'll we'll look forward to next season and our next episode of the podcast but for now number 17 fuck you Just boston to be clear. Fuck you, Boston. We caught up, bitch. Bill Russell gave you <laughs> yeah, an 11-ring 11, right. 11 head start. We caught the fuck up. What's up, Boston? Well, well, Boston Just to be clear, yeah, our next Boston episode will count. still be next week, not next season. Well, you yeah, know I'm saying? We're going to look forward. Um, right okay. now, we're going to enjoy right now. and then Oh, we'll yeah, we're going to relish the moment. Thing. We yeah, we'll do, we'll do the look forward thing later because right now the Lakers have just won the championship. Um. There was, there was so many re- really awesome moments in the game tonight, but let's start before we go into the full Laker thing that we're going to do. First off, shout out to Miami Heat. They played a hell of a series. Obviously, they were hampered by a couple of different things throughout the series, but look, they went through an absolute gauntlet to get here. They belonged here. They deserved yeah. to be here. They were legitimately, legitimately amazing rivals. Um, quite frankly, I wouldn't have wanted to play anybody else because these guys clearly wanted it bad enough to be here. Yeah. Jimmy Butler's a goddamn dog. Bam Adebayo. Also, huge shout out to Goran Dragic for even fighting way onto the floor tonight. That's yeah, that's that a season was ending injury. Impressive. Yeah, that's a season ending injury in literally every other you know version of it. And yet Dragic was like, "Yo, put whatever you got to do to get me on the court tonight," and he did. Um, so you shout out to him. You shout out to all them boys. But we're the fucking champions, and that feels pretty nice to say out loud. It's been ten years. Look, yeah. before and then also, I want to say the Lakers. As a fan base, we are not a tortured fan base. We are not a fan base that has struggled all that much in my lifetime. Um, We are a spoiled fan base. We are a fortunate fan base. We've had a couple of bad years, and it makes it sound like the end of the world because genuinely we don't know any fucking better. Um, But the mountaintop feels nice. It feels nice because it's been 10 years. It has been 10 years. I was going to touch on that really quick. And, you know, people say that about the Lakers all the time and how they're a spoiled fan base and how – They don't know what losing is or whatever the case may be. I think, especially after February, and that's Kobe's passing, I think we could put that. January 26th. Sorry, January 26th, my bad. Uh, It was was okay to put that aside for a second. You know, LA's fan base has been through a lot in the past couple months. Uh, It's not like they just lost. And I'm not saying, I'm not minimizing if someone else passed away. It, they lost one of their greats, one of the greatest to ever play, wear the Laker uniform. Um, he's an inspiration to so many people. Shout out to Amir, shout out to Wahaj, you know, the guys that were on the Kobe pod with us that, that, uh, hey, when we shout did. out Amin, don't forget Amin, bro. And Amin, sorry, I forgot. Shout out, Katie's, <laughs> shout out, Safe, we were on the pod, right? Yeah. So, like, all uh, we're uh, always on the you, pod, you guys. I was, I was immediately on board, you know, especially after that, not only because I felt like the Lakers were a good enough basketball team to win it. But I felt like the Lakers fan base deserves this simply because of everything they've gone through in this past year. Hurt is not minimized just because you've won in the past. That's not just to place. clear shit up, we didn't deserve this shit. We earned it. Facts. 
Facts. Yeah, look, the Lakers. We were literally the underdog coming into every fucking series. I it was. I don't know what you're talking about, Case. We were definitely public eye. every single. No, no, no. That what you're talking about is haters' eye. In the public eye, we were absolutely the favorites. Oh no, like we have been the I favorite do. all year, next to the Clippers and the Bucks to win Bucks. the championship since before the season, right? And um, let's not forget so yeah. the Clippers blew a three-one lead. <laughs> and enjoy, enjoy the win. I, I'm not even worried. We about are. It. We're not worried. I'm, not, I'm enjoying this Lakers. We're not worried, bro. We got this until the new year, and then we're focused on that 2021 ship. Yeah, I mean, look, that that's that's what it's all about, repeat. But, I mean, dude, honestly, LeBron came to L.A., and he said, you know, I, I didn't come here just to make movies and shit. I'm here to play basketball. And, honestly, a lot of people didn't believe him. Um, a lot of people were like, this is, you know, post, you know, post-prime LeBron, LeBron going Hollywood. He won us a championship. He got us Anthony Davis. He got us, you know, apparently the Messiah, Contavious, Caldwell, Pope, um, you know, Rondo, hey, hey, hey. Rondo, AD. God level Rondo, yeah, might I add. All, 39 all these, and a half percent from three Rondo. Yeah, all, all these guys came here around LeBron. LeBron brought this franchise back to where it needs to be and where it should be and has been historically. Um, I'm forever grateful. The coolest thing about it is, with LeBron, he was a Laker um, before tonight. Now he's forever a Laker. And I think that is the biggest thing for LeBron with LA as a fan base. You know, up until now, there was questions, there were comments, there were people who liked him, hated him, whatever. He is now a Laker forever. He is a part of Laker legacy and Laker lore forever. Yeah, he even There's said no it in an interview. About it. He was like, yeah, I might play in a Lakers uniform, but the fans won't consider me a Laker till we bring home a trophy. Absolutely. He repeated that sentiment tonight. It was at, Rachel Nichols actually asked him in the post game tonight about that. He, he said, look, I've done it. I've done what I promised, what I, what I came here with the intentions to do. And, and that's, I mean, look, I'm forever grateful. I am I mean, forever grateful. Can we, can we discuss what this man has done in year 17 though? 27.6 points per old. game in the playoffs, right? Uh, almost averaged a block a game, 1.3 steals, 8.7 assists, 9.4 rebounds. Uh, or sorry, yeah, 9.4 rebounds. It's like this is year 17, and this man mm-hmm. still blows our minds to this day as if he's just gotten into the league. I he's done better than certain other years in which he's won rings, you know. And that's that's the part that blows my mind is that LeBron found a way in year 17 to still amaze us, and I love yeah. that so much about him. No and doubt. despite all that success, he still can't shoot a free throw. <laughs> Uh, yeah, one one of four from the free throw line tonight, LeBron. Uh, we're up by thirty something at one point, so I guess it doesn't all matter. But pretty awesome. Look, the one thing I will say is about tonight's game because that's kind of what we should be discussing. But honestly, we're in the championship, so we're not going to go in super hardcore detail. Um, and listener, I don't think you expected us to. The title of this podcast is going to be Lakers of the fucking champs. So, you know, I don't think you're expecting us to talk that much about Game Six. But the little bit I will give you about Game Six is. I didn't expect the Lakers to come out. Actually, not not I didn't expect I didn't expect the Heat to not put up quite literally a fight from the get go. Like this game was in hand very quickly. You know, we we the Lakers won the first quarter twenty eight to eight. I mean, sorry, twenty eight to twenty, and then thirty six to sixteen. Um, and, and after that, the game the game was literally wrapped in a I mean, bow and done. Yeah, the like coordination before halftime. The Heat never led, and the game was only tied three times today. And I, I I'm a bit I'm a bit shocked by that, to be honest. That was the all Miami in the Heat, first six minutes of the game, too. Yeah. By the way, those three times. Yeah, the Miami Heat are a better basketball team than what they displayed tonight, and they will be back. I think they were team. gassed, bro. Dude, Jimmy Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler was tired. He still played 45 minutes tonight, which is just yeah. insane to me. It's insane that he played 45 minutes. Obviously, only 12 points, eight assists, seven rebounds. He's still, he's but still I mean, showing. He's a incredible trooper, moves. bro. Dude, yeah. he came up in that post game press conference in Game Five, and he was literally limping off the the, the little podium that they have for the press conferences. Uh, Jimmy was just, he gave it all he had. Props to Jimmy. Dude's an amazing. Guy. I think most people forgot he still has a fucked up ankle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That ankle Good. turn in Game Two was not a joke. Yeah, it took it took I feel a lot less tonight from the main guys of LeBron and AD because of the stepping up of Danny Green. Eleven points, by the way. Shout out Danny Green. 
uh, K- hey, you know, KCP seventeen. Fuck whoever points. gave Danny Green death threats. That's that's absolute that's facts. Yes, that's absolutely that's retarded, that's not, bro. That's, that's I not. said some shit about Danny Green, but I would never wish harm on him in real life. Absolutely not. It's a game of basketball. We just talking shit because we're upset, but by no means yeah. does that come off. I to ain't the mean basketball any court. of it. Yeah, yeah, it's it stays on the basketball court. We got nothing against Danny Green as a person. I'm sure he's a fantastic guy. And I'm not wishing nothing upon him. Yeah, As a matter of fact, I, I even one of y'all. We I even defended him on the last episode. I was like, "Yo, it is what it is." You know, you live with the shot because we're it, not worried. Yeah, it's like it is a good shot by Danny Green. Even even Jimmy Butler talked about it in the post game. He was like, "Yo, we got lucky with that one because Danny Green makes that shot a lot of the time." But anyway, we're talking about. Well, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we're talking about this one. Um, what? I don't know how much I want to look ahead, but but we can look ahead just a little bit. What does this say? for the legacies of like the guys like Dwight Howard and Rondo who now Dwight Howard is his first ring Rondo has his second ring what does this do for those guys does this mean that much to them um at all I think redemption arc? this will solidify think... Dwight's case as one of the best big men of all time I wouldn't go that far but I will say I think this solidifies his case to get into the hall of fame yes I do agree I, with I that. think Dwight is probably a hall of famer at this point now um, I actually had another question. Uh, I wanted to lean more towards what does this mean for AD in terms of his his echelon in the league in terms of current NBA players? You know, we always discuss is AD a top five player in the NBA? And after what he's done in the playoffs, I, I definitely no do think he is. That. Yeah, I can't see why you wouldn't. I, I have a I have a really hard time with top five because I think it's a really interesting discussion, right? The the four if we're we're talking about healthy, right? From from what we last saw. Where we're talking LeBron, Kawhi, Giannis, and um, and Kevin Durant, right? Those four guys are basically locks. Then you talk about obviously Steph Curry and Harden. Those are two guys and that Damian also right? Lillard. And, well, D- Damian I think is a notch. I think I think Anthony Davis is better than Damian Lillard. He is. Um, so I'm, I'm talking about those guys that are definitely better than him, and then in the conversation with him, and and the Steph Currys and the Hardens, and then Anthony Davis. So I don't know if he's top five specifically. He's no question a top ten player. He's no doubt the second best player at his position behind Giannis. Um, yeah, I mean, look, Anthony Davis, LeBron talked about it in the post gamer. He said, what, what does this mean? 27 year old LeBron got his first ring. 27 year old Anthony Davis got his first ring with the help of a mentor like figure with, with LeBron being Dwayne Wade with Anthony Davis being LeBron. I think this launches the next phase of what Anthony Davis will become. 100%. Um, and, and I hope I truly do believe that it will be with the Lakers. I think he will sign an extension this summer with the Lakers and what they do building the next decade of Anthony Davis, or at least the next five to seven years of what Anthony Davis is, is going to be extremely important. We talk about it every single year. We don't know how long this is going to last with LeBron. I'm done questioning that. I have been for quite some time for a couple of years now. Um, I'm just going to let LeBron do what LeBron does. He's clearly aging gracefully (laughs) with almost no interest in slowing down but they are at some point going to have to reinforce the team and allow LeBron to take a slightly lesser load as they did in certain parts of the regular season in the playoffs this year, Anthony Davis, there was a legitimate conversation as to if Anthony Davis is the better player on this team. Now we didn't partake in that because we know better because we're not idiots trying to get ratings, but at the same time, it was a legitimate conversation in the sense that he was genuinely that fucking good. Um, and I hope that they, a lot of these guys, uh, Danny Green, KCP, uh, JaVale McGee, those guys, Rondo, those guys are all on two-year deals. So they'll be back next year. But I hope that they can retool this team because I still believe this team was not well enough equipped. They were built well to win a championship this season, but there are going to be teams next season that are going to be a little bit better built to now beat this team. Um, and so I hope that they can retool and come back a little bit stronger next year than they were this year. But it, this year was enough to win the championship. So maybe next year will be too. I hope it is. Shit, I'm ready to go back to back. I'm ready I, to have that conversation. I'm excited to see how the Lakers bounce – or not bounce back because that's not properly worded, but how they move on from this, right? Because the cap may change a little bit. We don't know how that's going to look. We don't know when the season's going to start. You know, there's a lot of these factors that are going to play into what the Lakers are going to do. And I – I don't want to doubt Palinka and I don't want to doubt Jeannie. All of them know what they're doing very clearly. They freaking won tonight. Right. Yep. So they'll figure it out, but it's going to be very intriguing to see how the Lakers end up figuring this out uh, for the next season. Definitely. Kids, you want to get on this? I mean, no, like you said it perfectly. Like this team was built to win this year. 
Mm-hmm. But next year, there's going to be the Warriors coming back. We're going to have KD back in the league, presumably a healthy Kyrie. And then you've got well, the West is stacked all the way down. Yeah, look, the I mean, Suns the Suns look great. Exactly. The Grizzlies look good. I mean, Minnesota's going to have, have always been around. Minnesota's going to look fantastic. They're going to have playoff hopefully. aspirations, too. They got the number one pick. They got D'Angelo Russell and Carl Towns. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a lot of teams in the West that are going for it. And I think that there is probably a legit – look, this year was a very big uh, media doubt – mainstream media doubt the Lakers as the favorites. Um, and the Lakers came out and got the number one seed in the West as a prove it, right? It's like, a, hey, fuck you. We can do this. We are good enough to do this. And they did. Um, I don't think that they'll take next season the same way. I don't expect to be the number one seed in the NBA. No. Uh, sorry, in, in the West, number two seed in the NBA. But I don't think that that's necessary. Home court is necessary. Hopefully, we'll have a season with fans at some point, um, you know, if COVID can, you know, go away. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, I'm sure for many more reasons than just the Lakers playing basketball at Staples again. Um, but, but yeah, with, with the Lakers, they're going to retool. They're going to reset. I'm hoping that there are improvements in the fringes. I hope that Kyle Kuzma can become the Kyle Kuzma that we know and love. Because there were moments of it this season, but Kyle Kuzma this was year, not consistent. He wasn't the Kuzma that we we have fallen in love with as Laker fans. Um, and trust me, we still love Kyle Kuzma. We still fuck with Danny Green. Yeah, Contavious, says, Contavious yeah. the Messiah is is now another level. We might have to retire that man's jersey. Who the fuck knows? Anyone that says that Kuzma doesn't deserve a ring, please get out of here. This man's been here through literally everything. Bruh, look, Jared Dudley, Quinn Cook, JaVel McGee, J.R. Smith, Deion Waiters, and maybe even DeMarcus Cousins deserve a ring. And those guys didn't play much, if at all, in the finals or even the playoffs. Right, those guys are a part of the camaraderie. They're a part of the practices. They're a part of preparing the guys who did what they did. They so were going there back to that. <clears throat> I have a question. Yes. The Lakers bought Costas and THT into the bubble. Yeah, they get rings. And they weren't necessarily on a contract with the Lakers. A two-way contract. They were. They were. Okay, so they two-way were. contract players get rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, because because no, no. Normally, normally, I wouldn't say that they would. But because of the extended rosters with the That's bubble. That's why I was asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would – I think that Kostas will get a ring and he'll show Giannis and go, ha, ha. <laughs> That's the goal, oh, bro. Hey, look. That's the goal. The Lakers know what they were doing when they signed Kostas. They know what this was all about. Um, I'm not – The long run. Spec- I'm not speculating a damn thing. Wait, because so it's Kostas quite frankly, the next there's Messiah? No- Kostas, Kostas could potentially be the next. By the way, I think it's just two seconds. Let's do this. Rob Palinka, when we signed, the Lakers signed Contavious Caldwell Pope now three seasons ago as the marquee quote unquote free agent of that summer, referred to him in his introductory press conference as a messiah. At the time, not just Laker fans, NBA fans, basketball fans, humans across planet Earth laughed at that. And rightfully so. But now it makes a little more sense. He led to the signing of what became LeBron James, eventually Anthony Davis. He was the man literally way, played twenty five games in an ankle monitor. <laughs> well, anyone's not sure why K's is sa- or safe and K's are so on this is because KCP was the first clutch client to come to LA. He mm-hmm. was the one that paved the way for LeBron James to come to LA. It uh, was it was it was a favor that. Palenka and the Lakers and Genie Bus did by signing him on a one-year, eighteen million dollar deal. Yes, a lot of money. Get twenty to bring him in. What's up? So does Costas get twenty? Costas not part of Clutch. Costas gets twenty dollars. No, Costas gets twenty million to get his brother into LA. Yeah, he gets a ring. The ring. The ring is worth a lot. I would say the ring is worth a lot. If Giannis comes, you know, we'll tell Giannis, "Hey, yo, we're gonna give you the max. Slide like five milli to your bro." Oh, God. Uh, sure. we I'm sure they'll 70. just buy a house in Brentwood and live together. They'll be fine. But anyway, like yeah, I said, I don't want to do I don't want to do the speculation roller coaster because honestly, there is no, you know, there's no uh, proof or we even don't even know how long basketball's gone for, dude. See that that's the that's the sad thing. Yeah, like the reports, rumors, conversations are talking January, mid January. Um, I hope that we get it by then. I'm I was a little hoping Christmas Day, bro. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, think I was that's... really hoping. I don't think that's happening. But it's I not think, happening. I don't think it, I don't think two months is enough. 
I, I think they, that the one thing that the, the NBA won't openly admit, but is probably a part of the conversation is they probably want to avoid football. If they can get out of the way of football, they probably want to. Obviously, right. with they have to draft, they have free agency, they want players to get time off and vacation and breathe and deal with the things that are important to them that they didn't necessarily get to do to the 100% extent that they, they wanted to do in the bubble. They did do it, but I'm sure that they want to do it more in a more impactful way in their home cities and states. Um, so the players need that time off. And it helps that if football is out the way, the NBA can kind of get back some of that audience that it wasn't there beforehand, but any conversation as to the ratings is, is secondary to what the NBA is trying to do here. They, they knew, they knew what was important and they stood up for that. And I think that that was uh, inconsequential. I don't think that people stop watching basketball because they put black lives matter on the court. Or they talked about issues that mattered. And if they did fuck them, to be quite honest, fuck them. Yeah. They just don't understand what's more important. This is a game of basketball. There are things much more important than that. And I hope that that was highlighted in the bubble because that was the goal here. It was. I do want to. I do. I, I guess piggyback, piggybacking off what Safe just said. Shout out to uh, Chris Paul, Adam Silver, all those guys for making this happen. You know, having these players understand that you have a voice in the bubble. You can still say. You, you can still advocate for what you need to advocate for. We're all here with you. We all support you. Black lives do matter. You do need to. You know, you can still play the game of basketball continue the season and do what you need to do. So shout out to those guys. LeBron said it best. I, I don't remember what he said exactly, but he said it so well in his speech. Um, and I, you, you have to give credit to Chris Paul and Adam Silver for making this happen and getting this done. To and the best him. part was there was no backlash from the league when players did come out in support of the movement. Like there was literally a four minute press conference where Jamal Murray put a pair of shoes with Breonna Taylor and George Floyd's faces on them and just didn't answer any questions. Yep. It was like my press conference. Y'all can look at these shoes. Yeah. I mean, take honestly, take, take it, take it one further. Forget backlash. The league promoted it and yeah. helped in any way that they possibly could. And when the players didn't feel like the league and the owners were doing enough, they, they walked off. Play. And yeah. then they, the league said, the player, the owners said, Hey, what can we do better? What can we do more of? And I hope that they, they got the players got exactly what they were asking for and will continue to do so going forward. Um, let's go back to the Lakers really quickly because, quite frankly, how fucking dope was it? I don't want to leave, LeBron was smoking. Bro. LeBron was smoking his cigar, a cigar, answering questions. Come on, man. That man Come the, on, man. The classiest, just, uh, I don't know what to say about LeBron, man. Smoking his cigar, just kicking it, you know, answering questions. LeBron's just like, he's happy he's getting back home for Taco Tuesday. So he can beat Bronny's ass. But nah, yes, jokes aside. And then the other thing that was dope before we call it a podcast LeBron said, I want my damn respect. Yeah. How do you not? I, I, it, honestly, if you weren't giving it How to him. How do you already, not respect this man? If you weren't already giving it to him, I, well, what the hell's wrong with you, right? But come on now. Come on now. He's 35 years old and you're 17. Just won finals MVP with a Laker team that, you know, is, is not a very good team without LeBron James and Anthony Davis on it. If right. you're ever willing to have an argument against people that don't think LeBron's amazing, just put up year 17 stats. That's why I said it at the start of the podcast. Nobody – Just put up those quite, stats. Like, literally, LeBron is in a in a conversation as far as longevity with him and Kareem Dujabar. And that's literally it. Nobody has been this great, right? There have been players like Kobe and Dirk and even Vince to an extent that have played 20 years in the league – but this great for this long has literally only been done by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and that's it. And LeBron has arguably been better in basically every facet of the way, right? Um, it's unbelievable. But anyway, we've been rambling on for quite some time. So if we're ready, are you guys ready to call it for, for tonight? Yeah, let's yeah, call it. Give one last formal congratulations. Uh, Lakers on three, fuck the Clippers on four. No, nah, I don't, don't want to talk about them clowns. Hold on, hold on. It's all about the Lakers to your seven, uh, no, championship number 17. Really quick, because I know y'all were excited, so you jumped right into the podcast. You'll say, what's that Instagram real quick? Uh, at <laughs> Waterboy and Equipment Manager. And I know the Twitter. The Twitter is at Waterboy Manager. And what's the YouTube case? www.youtube.com slash the Waterboy and Equipment Manager podcast. Y'all know where to find us. We already got some posts up, some clips up. Go, go check it out. We'll be there. Uh, you know these two are about to be going crazy, so... 
I will have that about stuff to ready be. for you guys. I've been celebrating since 1030. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Lakers championship number 17. Fuck you, Boston. Go to hell. See ya. Adios. Bye. Bias for the win. Yeah. 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 Yeah.